Hello there, I'm Wally Wood. Thank you for joining us. This is another edition of the Revelation File. The days are getting darker, in case you didn't know, and it is what has been prophesied for the last days. And I'm reminded of what uh, Paul, the Apostle Paul, said to Timothy in the second epistle to Timothy, in chapter 3, verse 1. We made the comment that in the last days, perilous times will come. That's in the King James Version. All other translations tend to kind of lighten up on that. Difficult times, hard times, things like this. But in the King James, Paul said perilous times. Those are times that uh, Jesus spoke about, Daniel spoke about, as being the most threatening, the most frightening, the most fearful times ever in the history of man. Now, let me set the stage here because I want you to hear something that a pastor has just recently posted but um, I am not a doomsday anything. I'm not a doomsday prophet. I'm not a doomsday preacher or anything of this nature. I am by nature and training a newsman. By way of early life anointing and interest, I developed an interest in end time Bible prophecy from the youngest of ages, age of eight. But as we have gone on, in the, in the course of years and decades. Bad news is bad news. It's only been in recent times that the term fake news has come into vogue. But apart from that, the world has been getting worse, worse, and worse. Generation to generation, and especially in this particular generation in which we're living now. Jesus said it would happen. And you can't wish that away. You can't even pray it away. You can't vote it away. You can't pick it away. There's no way of stopping it because it was in prophecy, both in the Old Covenant and in the New. So the best thing we should do is get accustomed to the fact that it's coming, it's happening, it's going to be fulfilled. What is our role in these times? What does God expect of us? How can we best minister to the unenlightened at a time like this? How do we become effectual evangelists and savers of souls in a time like this? How do we walk in the fullness of the joy of the Lord in a time like this without appearing to be fake or overly religious? These are the challenges that we face as believers in times like this going forward. We've been instructing you, we've been uh, informing you from the very beginning of this series of programs, The Revelation File. What I want you to hear today is from a pastor. His name is uh, Pastor Dana Coverst uh, Coverstone of Living Word Ministries Assemblies of God in uh, Burksville, Kentucky. He shares three prophetic dreams that he had recently and their relationship to current as well as near future world events. It's about a, uh, it's a 16 minute um, testimony. It's very sobering, alarming, awakening, but I felt impressed that Everybody needs to hear this. I'll come back to give some closing comments when we're finished with this testimony. So here now is Pastor Dana Coverstone of Living Word Ministries Assemblies of God in Burksville, Kentucky. Hey, this is Dana Coverstone. I'm a pastor. I'm a husband. I'm a father. I'm a patriot. I love this country. And uh, I can confirm the first part of what I'm about to tell you because I told some men at a prayer group uh, back in December, second or third week of December. I want to share three specific dreams that I've had recently, uh, going back to December, two that I've had this week, both both Monday and last night, Monday and Tuesday night. Because I believe, number one, they are prophetic. Uh, the first one that I had has come explicitly true based on the events of March through June, <clears throat> the month in which we're living. And uh, I do not claim to be a prophet by any means. I understand, though, that some dreams and visions by their nature have a prophetic tendency to them. 
But I do believe I've seen things, uh, both that have happened as relevant by the first dream that I had, and some things that I've seen recently. So you can take what I'm about to say with a grain of salt. You can pray about it. You can think about it. Uh, but I believe that I have a warning uh, for the country, a warning for rural America, a, rural, uh, a, a, a warning for America overall. But here's what happened. Back in December, I woke up, I had a dream, and in that dream, I saw a calendar starting January 2020, and it was being flipped, and I saw January, I saw February, I saw March, and when March came up, the hand held it, and I saw the fin a finger underline the month of March, and then tap it three times. So underline the month of March, tapped it three times. So to me, it was emphasis. Something's going to happen in March, and then I saw April, May, June. And when June came, the hand underlined June again and tapped it three times. Then in the vision, I saw people marching. I saw protests. I saw people wearing masks. I saw lines going into hospitals. I saw um, typical medical doctors with needles or, 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 or syringes. I saw people on ventilators. I saw people who were very, very sick, very, very ill. I saw newspaper headlines trumpeting thousands of people getting sick. I saw um, ambulances just flying down roads. I, and then I saw, I saw cities on fire. I saw buildings being burned. I saw protesters with masks. Uh, I saw people who were, had their fists in the air, people who were yelling and screaming angry as at, just at the world. <clears throat> I saw courthouses. I saw state houses surrounded. I saw people who were mad at the world. Uh, I, saw, I saw guns, shotguns specifically put in the air, held like this. And I saw barriers within cities. Um, and I told several men in my church about this, and I can confirm who those men were, and they'll confirm that what I'm telling you is what I told them. I saw absolute chaos. And the other thing I saw was vultures, flying over large cities. And not just the ones that were burning, but I saw vultures flying over the cities and I saw smoke rising and I saw I saw people fearful. I saw people terrified. I saw people inside their homes and looking out the windows, the curtains of their windows with guns in their hands because there was absolute fear. Then I heard the words, brace yourself, brace yourself. So since December, I've been hearing those words, brace yourself. Brace yourself. Um, January, February came. didn't seem too much. I reminded the men of the dream. And then in March, boom, COVID-19 hit. And things started shutting down. Churches were shut down. Business was shut down. The economy shut down. Uh, then we began to see the protests starting in, Mar in May in Minneapolis. And all those things began to go on. So where we are at the end of the primary election here in Kentucky. And now there's talk of more shutdowns. I just heard the governor uh, talk about schools opening back up and things of that nature. <clears throat> but the things that I saw in a dream and vision back in December are the same things that I watched in the news almost every day since March through June. All this time I kept hearing, brace yourself, brace yourself. Um, I spend time in prayer. I spend time in the Word. I'm a pastor. And it's not just my job. It's something that I enjoy doing, I love doing. And I'm very interested in the news around the world. I read 40 newspapers a day from all around the world. I, I keep up with news uh, in other parts of the, of, of the, the nations better sometimes than I hear here because it's hard to know who to trust. But I get news from all over the world, all around the world, from both liberal and conservative sources. Um, I'm very well read. I'm very understanding of how nations work. I've traveled quite a bit, and I'm not just making these things up. I can confirm what I have said. And with that in mind, on Monday night, I had another dream. And it woke me from my bed. I made notes about it. I shot some video of myself, just making sure I can remember. But here's what I saw. I saw a calendar. Start with a calendar. And as I was having this, the calendar was up, a white figure appeared. And it, it, to me, it was it was a rep, representing God, the Holy Spirit, something pure, something righteous, something true, something holy. Because there was nothing um, nothing sinister about it, nothing evil. But I heard the voice say, "Part two, part two. And I saw June go up. I saw July, I saw August, and then I saw September. And I saw the finger underneath the word September, and like like emphasizing it, and tapped it three times. And then I saw October come up, and then I saw November. And this is when it got 
real to me in the dream. I think the intensity, uh, according to my Fitbit, when I woke up, my heart rate was about 180. So that was Monday night. It was also a night that I woke up not feeling very well at all. I was up during the night, not feeling well. But anyway, the minute the finger underlined November three times, instead of tapping it, I saw a fist ball up and it hit the calendar. And literally, the calendar exploded into the wall. The numbers seemed like they were 3D and they were falling. They were just flying everywhere. And there was a cloud of chaos that started. And then the next thing I saw was I saw... I saw armed protesters. I saw fighting in the streets. I saw people pummeling one another. I saw businesses shuttered and shut up. I saw, I saw schools closed. I saw schoolrooms with cobwebs hanging in them and like things like papers falling off the wall and posters falling like no one had been in them for months. I saw banks, bank buildings with the roofs being taken off. And it looked almost like alien abduction because money was just flying through the roof into some type of like a vacuum cleaner. I know it sounds kind of strange, but I was watching wealth just being taken. I saw politicians in back rooms uh, making deals with people, pat, you know, patting people on the back and, and laughing and smiling and smirking. And I saw monuments. I saw, I saw Washington, D.C. burning. I saw Washington, D.C. blazing. I saw fires everywhere. I saw people being rounded up. I saw Chinese and Russian soldiers on the ground. And Russian soldiers were telling the Chinese soldiers to go and pick up these people, round up these people, secure this quadrant, secure this area. I saw blue helmets of the UN. I saw military things taking place. I also saw no sign of President Trump. I saw no sign of leadership in Washington, D.C. But the vultures that I had seen were now like gargoyles, and they were 10 feet off the ground, 10 to 15 feet off the ground. And they were just attacking people mercilessly. I saw people hiding in their homes and garages. I saw churches being burned. I saw homes being burned. I saw absolute chaos. And the fist punch on the November of 2020 is what got my attention. And then I heard the words again, brace yourself, brace yourself, brace yourself. That has been something that I have heard for almost almost seven, well, seven months now. Starting once we get to July, it's going to be seven months. Um, and once again, I'm not claiming to be a prophet. I'm not claiming, proclaiming, you know, just, we'll see what happens in November, through November, and see if I'm right about this. But I know when I hear God's voice. I know, I know how, what God's voice sounds like to me. I know when He speaks. And I know when I have a dream that I know is Him. And the things that I was seeing, I don't say this to scare people, but I say this to warn people that there are some pretty sinister things coming down the pike. And not just for the lost, but for God's people as well. Uh, the second dream I had last night, and it woke me up. Uh, in this dream... Uh, we just had a yard sale to help fund a, a team going to, to Ecuador this next year. And we had a yard sale. And I had asked our secretary to get us some change for that, secretary, for, that, for that yard sale. So in the dream that I'm having, I walk to the bank. I walk into the bank to get some change. And on the door it says there's no change available. I saw the sign, it registered in my mind, but I walked on in. And the president of the local bank was at the teller station. And she had, she was going to be taking care of business. And I said, I need to get $10 and quarters for a yard sale. And she said, I'm sorry, but the U.S. Mint is no longer making currency or making change like pennies, nickels, dimes, quarters, half dollars. We're not doing that anymore. And I said, like, well, what do you mean? She said, they've stopped doing it. And I said, well, how are we going to be able to charge $1.50 for anything? And she said, prepare for hyperinflation and just charge $2.00. And then she said to me in the dream, oh, and by the way, $1 and $5 bills will follow soon after that. And then I heard those words, brace yourself, brace yourself, brace yourself. And I woke up, I wrote these things down. Um, I've never gone on video and recorded the dreams that I've had. And I, I hesitated to not do the one I had back in December. But everything I saw... And that dream in December came true between March and June. When in the, in, in the dream I was showed March through June. And so I don't think I would be doing uh, 
anyone a service if I don't share what I saw in these dreams and visions. And I believe that we're going to see not just a second huge wave of COVID between September, October, November, but we're going to see major things with the elections. We're going to see major chaos in our country. We're going to see troops in our cities. We're going to see the protests get even worse. We're going to see buildings burn. We're going to see what could only lead to civil war in this country. And so for my friends that are believers, I'm, here, I'm just going to share you what, what I think you need to hear. First of all, you need to be preparing food. You need to make sure you've got alternative forms of currency like silver or gold or whatever. I believe you need to have an ample supply of both guns and ammunition. And that's not just the Second Amendment fan in me coming out. That is the things that we're seeing. Uh, they're talking about defunding the police. That means one thing. You're on your own in a lot of areas. Uh, I also believe you need to be praying like you never prayed before. Make sure your family knows what's going on, where you are. Have some, some communication between your family about if certain things happen, if certain things go down. I'm not saying get off the grid. And I've never, ever said anything like this in my church. Um, I have said I, I believe things like this could happen, but I've never done what I'm doing right now. And I'm telling you that between September and November of this coming year, and you'll be able to check me, you know, if, if, if by the time we get November nothing's happened, or December 1st, man, you call, you call me on this and say, Dana Coverstone, you are an absolute idiot and a fool for saying those things. Go right ahead. Because I realize I'm responsible for what I've spoken. But I also know what I sense, and I know the Holy Spirit's voice enough to know that what I've heard, I believe is going to happen. And what I heard in December happened between March and June. Not because I'm a prophet, but because dreams have a prophetic edge to them sometimes. I've been doing a whole series on dreams and visions. I'm going to finish that series up tonight on my, uh, at our church. And I'm going to talk about why dreams and visions are literally an extension of the spiritual gifts of 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Because word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discernment, all those things are required for dreams. And I pray, Lord, show me what these things mean that I have seen. Show me how to interpret them and what they are. Uh, and right now as I speak this, it is, it is June 24th, Wednesday night at 5.30 p.m. in Burksville, Kentucky. I'm in my office at the church, Living Word Ministries in Burksville, Kentucky, sharing this. Not to scare you, because I believe, you know, look, God gave the prophets of the Old Testament a lot of warnings. Not to scare people, but to prepare them for what was coming. And so I'm, I'm, I'm challenging you. Don't just throw my word away. Don't just think I'm some, some preacher trying to get people to come. That's not it either. Because look, the Bible says the last days will be a great falling away. Jesus tells people to endure to the end. Make sure you endure to the end. Why? Because people won't endure sound doctrine. They're going to they're gonna hear something. You know, Some are going to hear me and go, oh man, he is on drugs or something. I'm just telling you the dreams I've had. You can do with them. You can interpret them the way that you want to. But I'm going to declare that I believe we're going to see between September and November incredible, terrible, awful, nasty, bad things happen in this nation. And for the people who are not prepared for it, it's not just going to catch them, catch them in a bad place. It's going to destroy a lot of faith, a lot of hearts, a lot of relationships, a lot of people. It's going to, it, the aim is to kill this nation. Because right now, we are a nation that stands in the way of a lot of the Antichrist principles like freedom, liberty, justice. First Amendment, Second Amendment, the Antichrist doesn't want those things. And yes, I do believe the Antichrist is alive and well on planet Earth. And I don't, like, I don't, I don't really care what people think about this video. You can call me whatever you want. You can say whatever you want about me. But wait till December 1st to say it. And if I'm wrong, I'll be the first one to come out and say, folks, I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know what I ate that night. But I've never had two dreams like this. I've never had a part one, part two. Part one came fully true. And part two, I believe, will as well. So, heed my words, folks. Believers, stop messing around if you're not living for the Lord like you need to. Because the press, there, there's an olive press moment coming for the church in this country. An olive press moment. And we're going to get crushed and squeezed and pushed down. That's why I believe God keeps saying, brace yourself. He's saying this to me so I can say it to you. Brace yourself for the things that are coming. Endure till the end, no matter how hard it gets. I'm not giving up the faith that I have in Christ. I've come too far in this walk and too far in my life to do that. But I want to make sure that others don't make that mistake. 
and don't just walk away from it. Take up the cross, deny yourself, and follow him. Thanks for listening. Wow. Give you just a few seconds to think about what you just heard without me interfering with that. From the beginning of this program in 2019, we've been stressing the, the fact that heaviness was coming. It's in the Bible. It's prophesied. And there is a place that we are to grow in and grow through as we demonstrate as believers that as he is, so are we in this world. He made a, a statement a while ago, and you've heard me say this before, and uh, I would invite you to go back to part one in this series in March of 2019, in which there was played a promotional video in which I made the comment that the Antichrist is alive. What you're seeing right now is our manuscript on Isaiah 18 to a mystery nation in a distant land. And much of what he has, this pastor has uh, presented here tonight is in this manuscript, not as a dream or vision, but as a prophecy put forth by Isaiah, the prophet, in the 18th chapter of his book, addressing a single nation in a distant place at a distant time. And the first word in that scripture is the word woe. And let me show you real quick what this manuscript contains in the way of the chapters. In chapter 1, we, we present the entire 13th chapter of Isaiah in its entirety, without commentary, without breakdown. <clears throat> we just present the entire scripture. In chapter 2, we reveal the nation that is being addressed in this chapter of Isaiah. Going to chapter 3, this nation being, being prophesied here is under supreme judgment. And there is a great woe coming upon this particular nation. In chapter 4, a broken nation heard. And you heard Pastor Dale just uh, talk about it just a moment ago that everybody's going to be hitting their knees. <clears throat> this nation that's being spoken of, which I am convinced is the United States of America, will be brought to its knees. It will become a broken nation from all of its sins and atrocities and allowances and, con uh, and support of, of evil. The righteous notwithstanding, Israel had righteous people among within it. And yet, they were broken by God too because the majority of the nation had turned its back on God. This nation spoken of in chapter 18 has done likewise. So that's chapter 4, a broken nation heard. Chapter 5, the arrival of revival. Herein lies the promise being given by God to this one nation. That as they, as a nation, from the top down and from the bottom up, breaks before God, he will bring revival to that nation. And he gives them a promise that they will be brought into the millennium of Christ. Only one other nation has that promise, and that's Israel. Chapter 6, we go back and take another look at Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. A very familiar passage. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their sin, I will hear their prayers and heal their land. We take a closer look at this passage as it is addressing the holy nation within the nation. If the holy nation of God, called by his name, will humble themselves and allow themselves to come humbly before God, broken, he will hear their prayers. But it's upon the responsibility of the holy nation within the sinful nation to bring themselves to that place of humility before God. From that comes revival. 
whenever the body of Christ, the church, that holy nation, whenever they humble themselves in truth and purity, it gets God's attention. And he changes things. He brings revival as a result of a broken church, of a contrite heart and broken spirit, crying out to God in the sincerity of their hearts, the desperation of their hearts, spirits. And he comes to their rescue. So ch chapter, uh, in this particular manuscript, Isaiah prophesies that there's coming that revival. And so in chapter 6 of this manuscript, we go deeper into this passage of Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, and take another look at it, not from the context of how everybody quotes it today. <clears throat> That's shallow. We're taking a deeper look at what God expects of that holy nation within the fallen nation. I invite you to get your copy of this manuscript. It's 43 pages long. It's very deep research. And you can order it by going to our website at wallywoodministries.com. And you can come down the page and find the manuscript presented and go to that particular site and order your copy. It's just a free will offering. And what we'll do is that once we receive your request given with your name and your email address, we will send you this manuscript in Adobe Reader PDF format so that you can receive it directly on your computer and open it, and read it, copy it, share it. I think that now is the time for everybody to know what is prophesied concerning this nation in the books of prophecy. So order your copy today of Isaiah 18 to a mystery nation in a distant time by going to wallywoodministries.com and placing your order there. And we'll get it to you as soon as we get your, the order from you. Our address is coming up next. I thank you for, for watching. We are going to go into this a little further in our next program. So stay tuned. I'm Wally Wood. Thank you for watching. You have been watching the Revelation File Report with Wally Wood, a Wally Wood Ministries production from Houston, Texas. You are able to support the ministry by donating at wallywoodministries.com and by mail at Wally Wood Ministries, P.O. Box 42005, Houston, Texas 77242. Wally is available to present full two-hour forms in your city called the Revelation File News Forum. For more details, contact Andy Valdez at 713-560-3348 or by email at andy at andyvaladez.com. The Revelation File News Report is a weekly update of global trends in the news as it aligns with end-time Bible prophecy. Tune in again next time and be sure to like and share this channel.